Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another Italian brand to discover and it is Simone Andriodi. Now this brand got a lot of hype recently, I would say, especially that it is not a very old brand. So since about two years, everybody is like obsessed with this brand. And I have tested some fragrances in my previous Testing Hyped Up Niche fragrances. I will leave them linked down below if you are interested. And since this year, I was on a mission to discover every month a new Italian brand, I decided to try and get a sample of every single fragrance from Simone Andrioli so I can test them. Today is just a first impression. I will definitely do on this brand a buying guide that probably I will upload in two or three months, depending on my schedule. So today is a first impression. I have already tested three fragrances. In my previous Testing Hyped Up Niche fragrances, I will leave these episodes linked down below if you are interested. And without further ado, let's start. Let's start with Leisure in Paradise. And it was not a surprise for me that people really, really love this scent because it is a tropical sweet vanilla scent. And this is a, like a DNA that is very, very popular. And I have to say, he did it right here. So Leisure in Paradise is coconut, but not too much. It has also some tropical fruits, papaya, I think, and pineapple. So. It has this fruity coconut vanilla DNA, but not overly done. So it's not cloying, it's not too much. And I would say from someone who doesn't like tropical fragrances, I really like this one. So this one gets a thumb up uh, for me. Next one, I think was the first one, at least that I heard of, and it is a Malibu Party in the Bay. And this is kind of this, almost pina colada, not exactly, but like this tropical beverage in a way. So it has rum, it has coconut, it has some lime, but I do not like the scent. It's too synthetic. To me personally, if we talk about scent profile, so I'm not considering like price tag and everything, this scent to a fragrance like Creed uh, Virgin Island Water, I definitely prefer the Creed one. Both of them have the synthetic note, I'm not going to lie. But here it has this sharpness, it's not really my vibe, I have to say. I get it that it got a lot of hype because again, it's a DNA that a lot of people really, really love. But for me personally, not a fan at all. And I was quite disappointed with this fragrance. Next hyped fragrance is Vice Bomb. And this one I smelled in my last episode, but I did not test it yet. So it's kind of a first impression. This is a cherry fragrance. Cherry is very popular. Again, a very, very popular mass pleasing DNA. This one I like. So one of my favorite fragrances of all time is Lost Cherry. And I also really, really love the one from Kayali, Burning Cherry. This one likes Malibu Party in the Bay. There is some sharpness here that I don't like. Is it a bad fragrance? Absolutely not. And I may warm up to it eventually because I love cherry in fragrances and it's a good cherry fragrance. I'm not going to say otherwise but just not the best, let's say. It has a caramel touch, so it's sweet, it's cherry. Of course, we have the vanilla and it's a little bit ambery, but I don't know. There is this sharpness that I don't like about it. But still, I, as I said, I didn't test it yet on my skin, like more than once, uh, to have like my final thoughts on this fragrance. Now, these were the fragrances that I've tested. Now, let's get to all the samples. So a lot of fragrances that are just first impression. I already pre-sprayed everything and I'm going randomly here. Next is Pacific Park. In the same vine like Malibu Party in the Bay, like Leisure in Paradise, it's kind of a tropical fragrance. There is a lot of vanilla definitely here and fruity notes, but more fresh fruity notes. It's not tropical fruits. It is synthetic, 
as the previous two like Leisure in Paradise and Malibu but I definitely prefer to Malibu Party in the Bay. It doesn't have a lot of this sharpness that I got in that one and it's sweet but it's not overly sweet at least for now. I like it. It's a sweet fruity fragrance with a lot of vanilla and I'm actually shocked that this one doesn't get a lot of hype because it's a very likable DNA and a very mass pleasing one. So this one, although not my vibe, I think I like it. Next we have Morea. Hmm. Okay, again, we are in the tropical theme. It has this beautiful freshness. But there is some, I would say, maybe yellow flowers mixed with some white flowers. It's creamy. I think there is the ylang ylang because it has this sweet, almost banana touch. Not that it smells like bananas, but ylang ylang does have this feeling to it. Nice. Not sure that it is my favorite, but at least it's a different take on yellow flower fragrances because there is something very fresh about it and it's not musky. It's usually when you put musk in these kind of fragrances, it freshens it up, but here it's something different, something, I don't know. I don't know what it is uh, and it's not citrusy even. Uh, so I'm quite intrigued and I will look up the notes for this one. So we have in the top C notes, okay, that explains it, lime, bergamot, neroli, we have ylang-ylang, we have tiari flower. That's quite interesting because I'm not a fan of tiari flowers. Narcissus, violet leaves, and in the base we have patchouli, amber, and vetiver. Quite interesting. So the C note is what gives it this almost sea breeze. Now that I know what is in here, I feel like, yes, it smells like a sea breeze and mixed with the silang ylang and this creamy tiari flower. Honestly, tiari flower here is not very predominant. It's mostly the ylang ylang. I like it. It's, it's beautiful, this, but I love this interpretation of like tropical yellow flower fragrances. So it's definitely a, a different take and I really appreciate that. I think this one may be a winner in the future when I test it, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Next, we have a fig fragrance and I am quite afraid. <laughs> because fig can go very, very wrong for me. It's one of the notes that I actually like in fragrances, but I don't like very green fig fragrances. So let's see how this one smells. And I didn't say the name. It's Fico Nero di Sardegna, which translates to black figs from Sardegna. Okay, this is quite on the green side, unfortunately but without the overly sharp edge of like the fig leaf when they put it in the fragrances. There is some sweetness, so you get also the fruit, maybe mixed with some yellow flowers. There's something creamy in the background, but mostly this is fig leaf and, and then fig fruit. So it has both of the notes in my opinion. Good balance actually of both of these notes. So it's not overly like, fruity fig and it's not overly green fig if you know what I mean but I don't think that this is my favorite fig fragrance since we spoke about fig let's take the next one Zeste di Sorrento hmm hmm nice so it's kind of what I expected to be honest because the name says everything so I expected lemon I expected maybe some orange blossom or neroli and it's definitely that very simplistic there is something almost sweet in it mm, but not much it's very 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 faint so maybe there is some kind of sweet fruit beside lemon and zesty notes and maybe a woody base but i can't really distinguish what kind of woods maybe sandalwood but I can't really say. It's a simple, mm, fresh, citrusy fragrance. It has potential, but 
not a, like a, a new take on this DNA. So it will depend on the performance of this fragrance to, for me, for me to decide if it's worth it or not. Because you all know I am a lover of citrusy fragrances and this just isn't, you know, enough for me. The next one is called Sintosa and I think this is the one that is projecting <laughs> since I've sprayed it. Let's see, I think, yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm, yeah, this is the one. I wish I did test this fragrance before doing my fragrances that remind me of the desert because this one would have definitely be in it. It's ambery, a lot of labdanum, maybe some incense or it isn't smoky, but there is something almost incensey in it. A little bit spicy, but not much. It really reminds me of some other fragrance, but I just can't turn, yeah, put my finger which fragrance it is. It's not Shams Oud because Shams Oud has also a lot of labdanum. No, it's something else. It, it's more on the unisex side and it's like, I would say, almost like an introduction into labdanum because labdanum, if it's very predominant, can be quite off-putting to a lot of people. Like oud, you know, it's a particular note, not for everyone. So it's kind of a um, mild labdanum. It's rounded. Maybe there is some vanilla or something or benzoin that you know, softens the edges of this fragrance. Mm -hmm. I like it, but I just know I've smelled something extremely, extremely similar. I just can't say what it is. I like this one and it's definitely something different. So we wear everything, you know, light, uh, fruity, tropical. Now we are getting into Oriental territory and I like what he did with this one. Honestly, let's get to the next one and it's called Camouflage. Mm, this is very masculine, a little bit aromatic, woody, could be a little bit of rose here, but I'm not liking this fragrance, to be honest. It's not like it's a bad one, but it's an indescriptive oriental fragrance. Let's put it like that. And I'm really, really curious about the notes because I can't distinguish. Maybe some rose, woody notes, sandalwood maybe. Mm, I will definitely look up the notes for this one. So we have olibanum. Now olibanum, I have to say, is one of the notes that I can't distinguish easily in fragrances. Uh, maybe because it's a note that I didn't smell a lot of. So my nose doesn't recognize it easily. We have then rose. You got to be kidding me. Oud. Really? Maybe yes, but it's mostly something else. We have ebony. Okay, this is the one. Ebony. Sandalwood and musk. No musks that I can detect. And the wood here is more, I don't know, like a supporting role. I cannot categorize this as an oud. No, now, you know, I'm getting more now the oud. I cannot categorize this like an wood rose combination. It's so woody rose. Mm, I'm, I'm no, I'm, I'm just not a fan. Uh, I don't like it. And I have to say, I don't like ebony in fragrances. I have never smelled any of the fragrances that have ebony in it and I liked it. So could be that, but it's definitely a masculine fragrance, but not special and I wouldn't recommend it. There's so many woody and even rose and wood combination on the market that is definitely better. <laughs> the next one has quite an intriguing name, Eterno or Eternal. Again, ambery, oriental, Middle Eastern fragrance that is a little bit smoky, incensey, smoky, balsamic so it's a different kind of you know middle eastern oriental fragrance that goes more on the resinous incensey side definitely masculine there's almost an aromatic touch but i can get that also with a lot of resinous notes 
they have this almost aromatic side to them. Uh, there is definitely incense here. I can definitely smell it. A really nice fragrance. This one I would say is for those who love this kind of DNA, a good one. I've smelled similar fragrances like in the same category that cost a lot of money. And Simone Andreoli in general is priced right. So I feel like this is a good option for those who love very resinous, incense fragrances. Yeah, I would recommend this one. Next one is called Born from Fire. <laughs> what a name. So I imagine something woody, something smoky. Let's see. Mm, not what I expected. It's not smoky, definitely spicy, but quite woody. And I would say there is wood here in the background, but there is. And it's, there is something almost clean in this fragrance. Maybe a lot of musk. I don't know. Aldehydes. There is something almost clean, like a detergent about it. And there is definitely rose. So I imagine this is another take. Uh, on rosewood combination, but very special, I would say, is this one. Not that I'm saying that I like the fragrance, but hmm, it's interesting. It's quite intriguing. I have to see the notes on this one. So we have cashmere wood, rose, vanilla, absolute. I'm not getting a lot of vanilla for now. Wood, sugar, amber, amorous, saffron, black pepper, and vetiver. Okay, rose, wood, saffron, cashmere wood, but I'm not getting a lot of vanilla. There is no sweetness that I can detect. But again, these kind of notes do develop on skin, so it can become very warm and sweet. Not that like it will be a sweet fragrance, but it will get sweeter on skin. For now, I am, I would say, intrigued, but not a fan. Let's put it like that. And it is quite masculine. Next, we have Don't Ask Permission. <laughs> I love the name. Mm. Okay, now we are getting something more on, I would say, almost tropical, but not exactly. So I get some booziness, again, fruity notes. Mm. I am going to say something a little bit controversial. There is something about this fragrance that reminds me of Herba Pura. So my guess, they are using almost the same synthetic fruity notes. Now, as you all know, fruity notes, if they are not citruses, are by definition synthetic. My only issue with fragrances that are on the fruity side, that are extremely synthetic, is the price tag. So, I'm not as mad <laughs> with this one as with Herba Pura, but it definitely reminds me of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am almost sure they are using the same synthetic fruity note. I know what it is, but it's there. <laughs> but this one is a little bit toned down, so it's not as creaming as Herba Pura. And it's a little bit on the boozy side. But yeah, I was immediately reminded of Herba Pura. <laughs> so again, I am looking up the notes on this one. So we have in the top notes sugar, lime, and sweet orange. We have in the mid passion fruit, peach, ylang ylang, heliotrope. In the base, we have white musk and liquor. You see, I did smell the liquor immediately. Ambergris and sandalwood. Hmm. I don't know what it is. Is it the passion fruit? But yeah, we have almost identical synthetic fruity notes here. So my tip, if you love Herba Pura and you can't get it on a deal, get this one instead. Last fragrance that I'm going to test today is called Rose of Dangerous Flamenco. <laughs> Whatever that means. It reminds, this reminds me again of the Zerjof. Which fragrance? I don't remember. But there is a fragrance of Zerjof that has wood and rose. And it smells very, very similar to that one. Mm, yes, 
This is your classical rosewood combination with a little bit of sweetness. Could be fruity notes because I do get Miller Harris Kerzo vibes here, but a little bit different in a way. Yeah, I can't say what is exactly the difference, but there's something or a note that is not very present in Scherzo from Miller Harris that really differentiates the two. Otherwise, I would say they are quite similar, but it does remind me more of that one from Zerzhov that I cannot remember. Which one was that one? So this is a classical, as I said, wood rose combination. Nice. And if we consider the price tag of Zerzhov, not bad, not bad at all, actually. And I would bet that this fragrance on skin will become quite warm and a little bit sweet. So I am looking up the notes and <laughs> in the section of Fragrantica of perfumes that remind me of this one. So let's see the notes. We have oud, damask rose, yes, dates, really, dried fruits, saffron and raspberry. Okay. Here you see this raspberry, which is also, I think, present in Scherzo. But honestly, I don't get dried fruit. I don't get dates. It's more saffron, rose, wood and raspberry. But it could be the notes that makes it different to Scherzo. Let's see the people who smell this. What do they say about the perfumes that remind them of this one? Okay, we have a Zerzhov fragrance, but... Let's see the name. More than words. Yes, yes, yes. I definitely, definitely can see the resemblance here. We have, shockingly, Miller Harris Kerzo. And I can definitely see this as a dupe of these two fragrances. Oh, I did miss one. It's called Smoke of God. I imagine something smoky. Uh, I mean, in the sense of incense Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's kind of a, I don't know, mellowed down incense fragrance. Clean. I don't know how you can combine both of these, but it smells clean and smoky at the same time. Quite interesting. Very, very interesting fragrance. And I can't get more than incense. I don't know, maybe a resin somehow. Could be olibanum, but I'm not sure. And maybe something woody in the base, but it's a very straightforward incense fragrance. Hmm. And uh, it's not as potent as you would expect, which for me is a good thing. So if you don't like extremely incense fragrances where you almost smell like a church, um, this is a good option, actually. I would recommend this one for those who love this kind of fragrances. Uh, there are three or four fragrances that I couldn't get my hand on a sample of, so mostly this is everything that Simone Andrioli created. I am not going to do a full ranking, honestly, because these are almost new to me and there's a lot of fragrances, so I am going to pick five fragrances that I would say are my favorite. Number one for sure is Leisure in Paradise, but again, this is a fragrance that I had the time to test and everything. So yeah, this is definitely worth the hype for me. And then I would say Pacific Park, and then I would go with Sintosa. This is developing quite nice here. It's getting better and better. So a lot of potential for this one. Then I would say, Murea. It's so interesting. I love this take on, you know, creamy, yellow, white floral fragrances. It's really nicely done. Next, I will go with the Rose of Dangerous Flamenco. And it's not shocking because I do like Scherzo from Miller Harris. And that was it. That was my first impression on Simone Andrioli. Uh, and I have to say, I am quite pleasantly surprised because I was expecting something overly synthetic. And there are some that are in this category, but I love how he worked with very popular, you know, scent profiles. So I do really appreciate that. And I appreciate that this brand 
until now at least is not overly priced so considering the price tag and everything this brand i would actually recommend to try and as i said i am going to do a buying guide so don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell i hope you liked this video and it was helpful tell me in the comments down below if you have tested any of simone and rioli fragrances which one is your favorite I'm looking forward to see your comments down below and i will leave the playlist of all the previous italian brands that i've tested till now in the description down below i did on uh, giardini di toscana milano fragrance which i highly highly recommend and a lot of other italian brands so don't forget to check the playlist down below Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Ciao.